All right. This, interestingly enough, is not what usually causes heart attacks. Maybe 10% of heart attacks will occur this way because when this finally blocks off, very often you will have these little tiny threads called collaterals that will develop around the outside of this artery and they will feed that downstream portion of heart muscle which is being deprived so that when this blocks off there's enough blood going through those collaterals to keep you from having a heart attack. But let's say that 10 percent for purposes of argument of heart attacks are caused this way. Well how do most heart attacks occur? Bingo! <clears throat> a, B, and C. Can you in the back see this little red dot that I put up? You do, okay. Gosh, you're seeing it better than I am. All right, if you look at A, the plaques that are most scary, that are never treated by angioplasty, are those that are no less than 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50% blocking the artery. You know, you don't begin to get symptoms from blockage of an artery until it's over 70% occluded. But what is nasty about these plaques is the fact that they do a nasty thing that we call they rupture. If you can still hear me, I hope. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to get into this a little bit more, more intimately today. We're going to do this. We are going to go to the next slide and I'm going to point out an area that is blue and it will be the inside of the artery. I'm also going to show you this little membrane in great detail and that is the endothelial cells. It is the endothelial cells that are so absolutely important. We used to think of these as little sort of bricks that would line the inside of our vascular system, these tubes that funnel all of our blood. However, these little endothelial cells we now know are absolutely metabolic dynamos, changing minute by minute, and they are very, very imp important. This is the area inside the blood vessel where blood is flowing. This little area, these little purple cells that are one layer thick and run across the inside of the artery wall. That, each of those is an endothelial cell. If we start over here at the left with these little orange fellows, this is your bad LDL cholesterol. And what the, one of the first things that happens when you start eating this terrible Western diet is that that little bad LDL cholesterol becomes sticky and so do the endothelial cells and so do your platelets. But the LDL cholesterol will migrate across the endothelial cell. Now you're in the subendothelial compartment where it becomes oxidized by this Western diet. I mean, if you want to know what oxidized is, it's you're, you're trying to be it's becoming rancid. You take a bite out of an apple and within minutes it's brown. It's been oxidized. It's going rancid. So now you've got this small, hard, dense LDL cholesterol, which is really the bad actor. That is recognized, and the white cells are called upon to get rid of this nasty cholesterol and back up. And so you have white cells also crossing the endothelial barrier, gobbling up this bad LDL cholesterol until as we come across here, one of these fellows becomes so filled and so chugged full of bad cholesterol, we changed the name. We now call it a foam cell. And this is wonderful work from Peter, of Peter Libby from Harvard, who has shown us that the foam cell produces these very nasty chemical substances which lead to this vicious cascade of events. I'll mention them once, you don't have to remember them for the test. The foam cell makes metalloproteinases, stromelicin, elastase, collagenase, which do what? They erode this cap over the plaque, this thin cap. And specifically, most of the erosion occurs in the upstream border of the cap. And this is particularly important because when this gets to be as thin as a cobweb, and then you have this blood just whoosh, racing over this cobweb 
thin plaque, it tears. And now we have the extravasation of plaque content. It's oozing out into the flowing blood, activating the platelets, which are the clotting factors. And this is highly thrombogenic, meaning it will cause a clot. So in a matter of minutes, we now have a clot form because of this rupture. And in a matter of minutes, since the clot itself is self-propagating, we go to this, bingo. This vessel, which moments before was not at all significantly blocked, is now suddenly totally occluded, and we have a heart attack or we have sudden death. But the whole point in dragging you through this painstaking sort of uh, cascade of events, the reason that this is so important, I feel, is that you have to understand that if you never rupture your plaque, then you have made yourself heart attack proof. And the message that I have today for you is that this horrible calamity that we call cardiovascular disease or heart disease is truly, it's a paper tiger. If it doesn't exist in other countries, it absolutely certainly never need exist in this United States. And how do you lick it? How do you conquer it? By making it so you can't rupture your plaque. How do you make it so you can't rupture your plaque? You change your metabolism and your biochemistry. How do you do that? By your diet. Does it take long? Yeah. About three or four weeks before you absolutely, I think, make yourself heart attack proof. How tough is that? 